He is not here, for he has been raised, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Matthew chapter 28, verse 6. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, I wish you a happy Easter. May the risen Lord bless you and all your families with his peace and joy. On this Easter, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. That his physical death, human body, that was crucified and tortured, was raised to new life, and he would not die anymore. In today's responsorial psalm, Psalm 118, we all responded, This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. And the beautiful thing we heard from the responsorial song, the stone which the builders rejected has become a cornerstone. The stone in which the builder rejected has become a cornerstone. Jesus came to save us. And we know the death of Jesus, how he was crucified, persecuted, tortured. But this rejected stone became cornerstone for our salvation, dear brothers and sisters. That is why this is a wonderful news to, to be happy and also thank God for the resurrection. Resurrection is the center and foundation and identity of our faith. Why the resurrection is the center, foundation, and identity of our faith? We hear from St. Paul in his letter, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 14, and 17, and 20th. St. Paul said, If Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and our faith is in vain. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is a delusion, and you are still lost in your sins. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Yes, dear brothers and sisters. Through the resurrection, we receive a new life. So if he is not resurrected, we will not be here. Because it is the foundation. It is the center of our faith. It is also our identity. He is risen. So all the prayers, all the liturgy, all the masses, even cross will be meaningless if he is not resurrected. What brought us together? It is not somebody's life, but it is Jesus, his life, death, and resurrection brought us together to be children of God and also he reconciled us with God the Father. That is why all the gifts that we receive through the resurrection, the greatest gift that we receive, forgiveness of sins. Again, risen Lord said, Peace be with you. The peace that we receive from God also, that is through the risen Lord, dear brothers and sisters. 
On today's uh, readings, the first reading taken from Acts of Apostles. Peter and Jesus going through the judgment. Peter looked at Jesus and also being there following for Jesus a little girl came to him and asked, Are you the one? Are you the disciple of him? What did Peter say? What did Peter say? He said that I don't know him. He denied. How many times? Three times. He denied, I don't know him. But now, after the resurrection, after Peter saw him, and after Peter talked with him, after Peter received the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit gave him courage. A courage to talk about Jesus in front of thousands of people. And he is the one who said, you crucified him. And now, I'm telling, I know him in person. I experienced him. I have seen him. Now, the forgiveness of sins are possible through him. Those who come to him, they receive this great blessing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The man who was afraid of one person, and he was able to stand in front of thousands of people and witness about the power of the resurrection, it is because he saw Jesus and he felt there is nothing to fear full in his life. Even to die for Jesus, I'm here, I'm ready because the resurrection brought him into the light. Do we have that light? Do we have that courage? Do we have that uh, true belief in Jesus' resurrection? And what brings us more blessings in our life? It is Jesus, our Lord. And again, dear brothers and sisters, in Paul, he, he never, in his life, very well-educated man, and he studied scriptures, and he was a Jew completely involved in the uh, scripture and everything, he did, not, he did not realize Jesus is the Lord and Savior, even he did not believe in the resurrection. And what he believed, he was thinking Messiah not had come. So that is why he was trying to persecute the church, apostles and those who believe in him. But one experience, one experience changed his life, Damascus experience. And he changed, he transformed, and he saw him after the death of Jesus. And again, he saw him in person, and St. Paul talked with Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, now you have to proclaim my name. Till now you are persecuting and your eyes are closed. You are in the darkness. Now you came to light. Now you have to proclaim this resurrection, the truth. Then he began talking about love of Christ, talking about the faith, talking about the resurrection. And he is the one who said, so fix your eyes on heavenly things. Fix your eyes on heavenly things. Though we live on this earth, our citizenship is heaven. That is why concentrate on heavenly things. And one who did not realize before, after meeting the risen Lord, and Jesus himself talked with him, and then Paul even he said, I have completed my race. I'm waiting for God's uh, 
or blessing and God's reward. So for me, death is a gain. He was not fearful. He was not afraid of his death or sickness, hardships, anything in his life, because with God, everything is possible. With the power of the risen Lord, everything is possible. So he understood the true meaning of life and death and faith and light, all the things at once, dear brothers and sisters. And there is a big problem about the sin. And the sin separates us from God and also some separates us from our fellow brethren. You know, the first sin committed by Adam and Eve, and we see in Genesis, and God asked him, where are you? Before committing sin, they are enjoying the presence of God. They are walking with God and talking with him. After committing sin, what happened? They are fearful and also they are afraid. And the death also entered in their lives. And they are afraid and hiding. And when God asked him, where are you? So they are so much afraid. But dear brothers and sisters, it is God who gives the life. It is God who gives true life that comes only from God. God is the author of life. John chapter 10 verse 10, Jesus said, Thief comes to steal, to destroy, to kill, but I have come to give life, life in fullness. So Jesus said a beautiful thing about the thief comes to steal, destroy, and kill, but I have come to give life, life in fullness. From the beginning of the creation, God created human beings in his own image and likeness, and he breathed in the life. That is why we can experience that true life from God. But when through the disobedience, through the sin, and things change, that God did not leave us. He sent his only son to save us. But there is uh, that we deal with sin and the evil and what attacks our lives are more, like we have to pay concentration on that. You know, so God loves us to live our life fully. But he, he, here, the evil one come and attack you. How? And to steal. What is there to steal in you? Do you have a lot of money? What is the precious gift in our life? Peace and joy. And you receive it through the baptism, through godly life. And thief comes to steal that peace in our life, the dignity of Christian life. And when he comes and steals, and it is also taking you to destroy your life, your family. And that is why we see the anger and jealousy and all kinds of things enter into our lives. And marriages are broken and people are broken. And again, we look for something. And that may be sometimes it's drugs, sometimes it may be alcohol, some other evil. So trying to kill and destroy our lives, it is the evil one's work. But Jesus came to give life, life in fullness. And during his lifetime, Jesus gave life to three people. One, a little girl, 12 years old, and her father went to Jesus. Jesus, my daughter was sick. Come and pray. And he was believing that if Jesus comes, she will receive the healing. And on the way, daughter died. And again, so let not bother him. She already died. But Jesus said, she went there and he also called Talitha Kumi. Little girl, get up. Jesus gave the life. Again, a young man Jesus gave the life. 
again Lazarus after four days standing in front of the tomb and Jesus said Lazarus come out then he got the life so God is the author of life but God is not stopping just giving a life for you for a moment but God is happy to give you life eternal life how is it possible how do you get that eternal life it is only Jesus kills the death usually death kills us but it is Jesus kills the death means through his life and uh, resurrection and he also put an end to the death that is why dear brothers and sisters we see in the life of Jesus and all the saints and everyone those who believe in him they have the life and eternal life and today as we are here st paul says that romans chapter 6 verse 23 for the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life in jesus christ praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord and we believe in jesus christ and who gives the eternal life and though because of the sin because of the evil we are going through but in belief in jesus brings us eternal life through joy through peace and jesus mentioned about his death and also his resurrection but again he also said john chapter 2 verse 19 destroy this temple and in three days i will raise it up he is not talking about the external building he is talking about his own body this body became a temple of god through the baptism you are all a temple of god and god dwells within us so that is why uh, jesus when he said all of the jewish people they said how is it possible this building was built like uh, 46 years but jesus so through his resurrection proved that even though you destroy there is a life after death dear brothers and sisters what does it mean jesus is risen our pope francis said it means that the love of God is stronger than evil and death itself. It means that the love of God can transform our lives. Let those desert places in our hearts bloom. So the love of God can do that. St. Paul, John Paul II said, We are Easter people and hallelujah is our song. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the, Praise the Lord. We are Easter people. Hallelujah is our song. Let us experience that. How belief in Jesus, risen Lord, and experience true peace, true joy. Nothing will give you. Only risen Lord give you that peace and joy. I want to conclude this message with a little story. I said yesterday, you are missing that. That's why I want to share with you once again. So, there was a rich man and he wanted to begin a, a great religion. And he said, I have a lot of money. I'm very famous and popular man. I want to build, I want to start a religion. He called his friends and asked what I have to do. And one of the friends said, you go to the forest and uh, uh, meditate and the evil powers, they come and uh, fight with you. If you uh, win, conquer them, you receive the powers and then you will be giving the wisdom. Whatever you talk, you are going to give the uh, solutions for the problems people may follow. Other friends said, hey, do one thing and build a monastery and live a kind of life that attracts the people and so that you can begin a new religion. And one of the Catholic priests happened to go there and he said, 
if you want to start, do one thing. Die on the Friday. Be in the tomb two days. And on the third day, Sunday morning, you raise from the dead. And this man was like, dying? Okay, it's possible. I can commit suicide or somebody may kill. And being in the tomb, it is also possible. But rising? Silent. As you are silent. <laughs> so, my dear brothers and sisters, believing in Jesus Christ, Jesus said, I am the life and the resurrection. Those who believe in me, even if they die, they live forever. The eternal life is promised through Jesus because he conquered and he destroyed the sin and destroyed the death, destroyed the Satan. We have the power and the risen Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.